Sister Chilu Theater is a lovely ladies of horror and James Bond women panel. And I want to thank them all for coming. Thank you so much. It's early in the day, so I'm sure it's kind of crazy out there. It's quite late for us, actually, because we're, we're in summer. We're changing the clocks, so yeah. we're going, actually, oh, we've gone forward, but now we're going back again. <laughs> very, very confusing. Yeah, yes, my, 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 the newest young blood of the group, uh, having appeared in uh, the Underworld films. And uh, I have a question, just, I'm just going to ramble here. So how is it sitting next to these people and uh, hearing all these stories of the uh, horror <laughs> films before, you know, before you got into the business? Yeah, no, it's a real privilege to be surrounded by such legends and, and, and the film world, so. Yeah, such vintage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've probably heard a lot of stories yeah. of oh, yeah. the early days of, you know, filmmaking in the 60s, 70s. Yeah, absolutely. So, since we're going to ramble, uh, we're rambling. We like a bit of a ramble. James Bond, 50 years. Yes, 50 years. 50 years. Careful. Yes. Great movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, are, are you guys getting a lot of questions about that? Uh, this wow. Week? We are, all of us, all of us have been, we've done a few things, actually. We've been jolly busy, I mean, it's really been Bond this, Bond that, Bond night and morning, really, which is very nice, it's very nice. All bonding again. Yeah. <laughs> and the girls, but will you stop that? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep my sister in check. She's just dreadful. She's dreadful. She's dreadful. Stop it, darling. And, and do you also go beside the Hermit Films track in 1917, The Golden Watch of Sinbad? Uh, for you, what's the film you're asked about the most? Me? Um, Sinbad, definitely. I, I get asked a lot about Captain Cronus, oh, okay. which was a Hammer film I did many years ago, before you were born. <laughs> it really was, it really was. Which is very sad, but it's lovely to have some young, yeah, isn't it? Lovely young blood and young energy. Um, yes, so it would be Cronus for me, Cronus, Simba, always. I, I think Cronus is the one horror film that people wanted the sequel, wanted the series, and it just never happened. That was toward the tail end, anyway. It was the, to, towards the tail end of Hammer, and they did, um, uh, Brian, lovely Brian Clemens, who wrote it and who directed it, his only directorial debut, but the only film he did. Um, uh, wanted there to be another one, but it, it was a little bit soft, the film at the time. It wasn't necessarily uh, deemed a hammer film because it didn't have uh, a lot of blood, not too many bosoms were on show. So I think it kind of lacked what Hammer wanted to say. But so it was, uh, sadly, because I think it's, it's I, I would say it's gained legs. It's kind of gained momentum as it's gone. And it's, it's a very stylishly uh, shot little film. And, and, it's the yeah. Sophia, actually, you're in one of my favorite Doctor Who episodes. The girl uh, in the fireplace, the David Tennant uh, run. And uh, I actually love the David Tennant Doctor Who. Mm. I know some people aren't too crazy about it. But I and that episode, do you have anything that you can recall about it? Because it's very weird. There was a lot of time travel going on in that. Yeah, um, well, Stephen Moffat is such an exquisite writer, and the fact that he was able to tell this story, um, which is so epic in scope, but actually the episode only lasted for 45 minutes, and yeah, it was just, for me, it was just a magical experience, and it took, took me sort of, I think, nine days to shoot the episode, but what's amazing about being part of something like Doctor Who is that it lives with, I didn't realise it'd be part of my life ever. <laughs> Um, when you're on your Zimmer. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
so that's it's it's lovely because it kind of keeps the work alive and it's it's lovely to come here and you know meet people that have been really touched by the stories that you've spent your time telling. Do you get a lot of people that come to you with the Doctor Who reference? Yeah, less so in the States because it's much more popular in England, but um, yeah, there have been quite a few here. Yeah, yeah. Valerie? Yes, yes, I'm here. <laughs> Present and correct. <laughs> so, uh, what film are you most asked about at, at, at events like this? Well, I'm really lucky because I've been. Um, I've been connected with three British film series that have all become cults, which is the Carry On Films, Hammer Horror, and Bond. So um, I'm really lucky, I'm fortunate. Um, and I think here, you know, and also Revenge of the Pink Panther with Peter Sellers, you know, which was another iconic series. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it's great. But I mean, I guess here, people do like the horror, the horror of Blood from the Mummies too. Uh, which was, in fact, a Jinx movie, um, which I guess anybody horror fans here know it was a Jinx movie. But I, I started filming with uh, Peter Cushing, you know, master of horror. Um, he was playing my father, and uh, after the first day's filming, he, he, he left the film because his wife was seriously, seriously ill. And uh, his part was taken by another Hammer actor, but lesser known, called Andrew Kerr. And there, the young man who was in the arts department, was killed on his motorbike, uh, which is strange because my fiancé in the film was killed on his motorbike, and finally, a week before the end of the shoot, the director, who'd had hiccups for a week, suddenly, uh, after a dinner party with his wife, he turned to her and he said, I'm going, and he dropped dead. Uh, and, and that was my very first leading role, and I tell you, that movie, and I'll never forget when I actually had to get into the coffin and they put the lid on, and I thought, shit, oh, they don't need me there, excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, Blood from the Mummies 2, Mummy, I'm still living on it, 1971, but it was a genius film. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Marty. Uh, Thunderball or From Russia with Love? Which of those two films are you asked about the most? Both, actually. Both equally? Mm -hmm. But I find, actually, I've found this time it's been Thunderball. And it's interesting because Thunderball was like the zenith of the Bond films. I mean, it was like right there. And somebody mentioned to me just now that did, I heard that it was really crawling with tourists and press, and I said, yes, it was. Every paper, newspaper, every magazine came down and photographed it. And all sorts of tourists came down with their yachts as well, I might add. At which point, Terence Young used them as extras in the film with all their diamonds and their furs and everything. The only problem with using friends and rich people is that they don't turn up the next night. And there's a slight, because we did it can't be bothered. There's no con continuity. So that was a slight problem. But it was a fabulous shoot. Oh my God, one of the great experiences of my life. Truly, loved it. Now, I, I want to ask you a question, because I'm not sure how often you've asked about this. You and Oliver Stone's first feature film, Oh yes. Seizure, as uh, the Queen of Evil. Uh, a lot of people, uh, that hate the film, and some <laughs> like it. Well, it has nothing to do with it. Oh, yeah. You're such a charmer. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, it's a weird film. I think one of the things that alienates people is the implied dog death that's in there briefly. Um, the implied what? Dog oh. death. Oh. The dog is hung from a tree. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people right away. But what do you recall about that movie? Do you remember anything about Seizure? Oh my God. Do you have an hour's days? I mean, it's just unbelievable. I mean, talk about gyms. I mean, this is a movie that, first of all, nobody, we were paid peanuts and we did it for nothing. And basically, we were put in this house in the Laurentian Mountains in front of a lake. I mean, we were like literally cut off and we were all living in the house and shooting in each room. And every time we would kind of go to shoot something, we would have, we were shooting in the attic, suddenly it was hailstones. Then we were shooting outside and all the cameras froze. I mean, it was just incredible. And it was like, there was a, it was so haunted. 
we figured. And it was absolutely mad, totally mad. Hervé Vilches, who went berserk because his wife was having an affair and she wasn't there and he was really chopping up the, the, you know, using an axe to chop things up. I mean, it was just a complete nightmare. And my, that was the real life, was it? This was real life. This was this real was life. in it. No, no, no. So all this stuff, I wish I had, I wish I had a film of the making of this because it was, I would say, probably as serious as the film was. As bloody as the film was. It was just intense. And we all, we all knew, though, that Oliver, mad as he was, was definitely genius. I mean, genius. And, and I loved it, but it was absolutely crazy. Totally crazy. And Jonathan Freed was hilarious because he was so grumpy all the time. <laughs> and here's the other thing too, where all, all the rooms were used in the film, so that if you wanted to go to the loo, and of course naturally there's no sound, it's not a sound stage, so if you want to go to the loo or if you want to do anything outside, we had, you couldn't go because we were filming and the sound. And it was, so we woke up in the morning with all the, the, the cameras and all the equipment around us. And Jonathan said, I didn't do this film to have all this stuff in the mouth. I said, Tony, but all you have to do is roll out of bed and there you are, you see. It's <laughs> all there for you. Anyway, so it was, a, it was a crazy shoot and I wish I had more photographs, but Hermé did all the photography and he's gone. But I loved it. It was crazy. Jump around and we'll go back and forth. So, Sophia, you actually were in Thunderbirds, yeah. the mega budgeted live action version of the Jerry uh, Ellison marionette thing, which didn't really, I guess, gain the following. Mm -hmm. uh, it should have, because for one reason or another. What do you recall about playing Lady Penelope? Um, that was one of my favourite jobs, actually. It was such a magical experience. Um, and I think the reason that it didn't do as well as people wanted it to was because they marketed it wrong. What people didn't understand is that we were making, we set out to make a, a film for children. And so, and, and in fact, we succeeded very well with that because if you show the film to any six year old kid, they'll have it on a loop for about three years. Um, so, um, but yeah, I think some of the die hard fans of the original were disappointed that it was much more based around children. But, I loved it. Jonathan Fox directed Jonathan Frakes. Frakes. Yeah. From Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he directed it. How was he to work with? He was great. I remember him being very, very funny. Yeah, just and because he's an actor himself. He's, I think act, uh, directors that have also been actors kind of have a different kind of empathy for us. So, yeah, I loved it. Great. Valerie. <coughs> Carry on films that you mentioned. I love those. Uh, so many of them. So you've seen them in the States, then? The carry-on films? If we really want to find them, we find them. Uh, and there's a couple of box sets up there. Yeah? Um, I think carry-on streaming is one of my favorites. Carry-on spying was like two of the really better ones. They're before my time. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the ones you did, uh, which of the ones you like? You enjoy uh, those? Well, I started off in Kaiba, which is, uh, but I only floated around as a hospitality girl. Uh, that was, but it is, carrying on the Kaiba, I think is people's favorites. Uh, and in fact, it was, uh, it was voted in, in the 100 best early British films. I mean, it came in at number 99, but it was voted. <laughs> um, camping, uh, and I graduated to a couple of lines. Again, Doctor, I had a lovely scene with Jim Dale. Up the Jungle I enjoyed very much. Tonka, Tonka, stick it up. Anyway, um, and uh, Carry On Girls, where I was um, really playing from being sort of secretary to Bernard Breslau, and I was transformed into a beauty queen. Um, but I think out of all of them, I preferred Carry On the Jungle. Oh, and I did do a, I did do a television a Christmas special called uh, Carry On Christmas, also known as Carry On Stuffing, where I was. Um, uh, a serving wench caught in compromising positions. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were great fun to work on. But also, How you many did you do? Sorry. I did six in the television special. 
and you did bit parts in the Avengers, the Persuaders, and yeah. other and, a, and a nice, uh, a nice part in no, the Persuaders. I had a nice part in the Persuaders. Persuaders. Yeah, I had a really. Uh, no, that was with Tony Curtis as well. A bunch more. Indeed, it was. Yes, and uh, where he he directed the episode of the Persuaders I was in, and. Um, and I remember within in the episode he wanted me to try and help him, and I wouldn't. I was playing an out-of-work actress driving around in a, an extraordinary car, like a space rocket. A rocket. Space rocket. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, promoting soap, and he wanted to try and enlist my services, and I wouldn't help him. And, uh, and then at one point, which was totally unscripted, to make me help him, he gave me an unscripted kiss. And I was so surprised, I closed my eyes. I enjoyed the kiss. I opened them and grinned, and all of which they kept in. <laughs> but, um, you know, Roger's great. I worked with him three times. He's a lovely, lovely man. Great story. Carolyn, I've never asked you about At The Earth's Core. Nice. Um, nice film. Do you have any particular remembrance of that film? I just remember it being a very, one of my favorite experiences, driving along in my little mini as we did then, and, and um, driving to the studio with a big smile on my face and getting to work with two of my favorite actors. And I, I worked with Peter Cushing a couple of times, and with this one, we've kind of worked all the way through Peter Cushing and, and Doug McClure, lovely Doug McClure. Hello, how are you? Have you just, were you here before? Have you just arrived? Lovely to see Anne Robert. Um, I'll speak to you later. Um, no, it was it was just an amazing experience to work with these, you know, these, these people that have worked, kind of worked forever and were so well known. And I hadn't done a lot, so it was amazing for me. And we worked really hard. And I was amazed that Peter, he was he's a very physical actor, as was Doug. And he was not in the, his first flush of youth then, but he did all his own stunts. We, we all did all our own stunts. And if anybody's seen it, it's mostly a children's film, but it's a very sweet film. And, and whatever you see, all the athletic stuff, we did it all. And Doug and I got into a rather nasty little um, patch because um, they said, we'll have, uh, we've got a couple of stand-ins, doubles, stunt doubles, you want them. And I looked at Doug and he said, nah, we'll do it. Foolish. Anyway, we, they set up the scene. I'm cutting it really short. Set up the scene. It was a scene where they had fire. They had a fiery beastie. Sort of a, I was going to say, it was a man in a suit, but this wasn't. This was a sort of a great big thing, a belching flame of fire that came out. And, and we, were, we had rehearsed the scene once, and they said, right, we'll take it. And on the next take, I think the technician put a bit too much gasoline or whatever you put in it and this almighty thing of fire shot out so the screams from myself and Doug were, we were oh yes not method it was real that was real and all the little you know little hair on my singed everything was kind of singed but anyway it worked in the film so they were brilliant to work with anything for your art Caroline <laughs> oh that's it anything for your art that's right <laughs> I'm sure all of us have got something to say about that. <laughs> Running around in that cage set with that costume. Not a lot of costume. Not a lot of costume. A lot of um, toupee tape, you know, a lot of sticky stuff. So keep it all together. It was for the children, after all. Sorry? Did you get bruised or anything? Yeah, or? I always got bruised. I was always rolling and falling about. Yes, I was black and blue. But again, all for art, Val. <laughs> Things one does. Thank God for makeup. Yes, exactly. especially body makeup. Yes, yes. Totally with all the bumps and bruises. But of course now, I mean, they do. I mean, it's, it's a different way. You do have to stand in and stump people. But very much in when we were doing it, the, in the vintage days, I mean, you, you did it yourself. You pretty much did. We did it. It was, you know, none of this CGI, which is amazing. But it was all very as is. You do it. And it's a great Next question to you for Underworld, which is heavy on CGI, but practical effects too, and a lot of blood and a lot of physical. What's it like working on those films? The 
Scott with them? Well, on, on the one, we had a really great stunt team. So when we did have to, I did have to do my own stunt, kind of that bit where I jump up to the ceiling and that, but that was quite scary. I remember watching the stunt person rehearse it and what they did was to, to get me to shoot from the ground up to the ceiling. They kind of wrapped the body, and I saw them doing it to the stunt person. They kind of twist the cable around the body and then there's somebody behind, so when they pull the thing, it's like, jacks you up like that. When I watched it, I said, well, the stunt team is just going to show you how it works. And I was like, okay, fine. And this poor woman got completely kind of, you know, twisted and was hanging upside down. I don't know if it's going to work. But um, we did it and it did work. But yeah, but I still, I mean, I, I find that you do get beaten up a lot on jobs. I just was shooting a horror film in Colombia called Gallows Hill and there's a big kind of fight sequence in a car. And the thing is, is that when actors adrenaline gets going, when you're really going for something in the moment, you know, accidents do happen. And I broke a, well, one of the other actors broke one of my ribs on that. So I find on every job, I don't know about you guys, but I always come away with some kind of injury. That's terrible. <laughs> I was lucky. Really? Because I've done a lot of this stuff, and I, I never got hurt. Did you not? I, had, I did several fights. I, I mean, and also I, had a, I did a film in uh, a western, which we, Caroline's done one too, and I did this western, and I didn't know how to ride. I lied. <laughs> we all did. Of course I can ride. Let me see. I'm going to be three months on a horse. Oh, no problem. No problem. No problem. I'll do all my stunts. Oh, no problem. So there I was. And I literally was like on the horse for three months and literally jumping on trains, jumping off trains, leaping down gullies, up hills. I mean, and I got. I mean, the horse, at one point, was very embarrassed because he was in love with me. It was a, it was poor thing. He was, every time he saw me, he just went, oh. And he would just kind of like, get all fluffy. Um, I won't say exactly how. Um, he showed a little too much, how much he loved me. And of course, he was teased by, he was laughed at. And he got very upset at one point, and he was really embarrassed. And so he decided to throw me. And he went for it. And I and literally, I managed to hang on just before I was literally thrown off. And I got off, and I went up to him, and I smacked him on the face. I said, don't you ever do that again. And he, and he just went, and he just, and me, and of course, he was still in love, so there we are. So, <laughs> My darling Tarzan, oh, I adored him. He was, so, he was the biggest bloody horse too. Bigger than everybody. All the guys have really nice, neat, you know, neat horses. No, me, big, giant grey horse. So, but I was lucky. I never actually got hurt ever. Poor you. Oh. Yes, Caroline got really hurt too. My horse hated me, and I didn't <laughs> lie. I said, no, I can't ride. I you know, I'm not the one you want. They said, yes, we do want you, we'll teach you. I had Topo teaching me up and down the hills in Spain. And, and my horse took one look at me, unlike your horse, and said, I don't like you. I know oh, no. you cannot ride. He was called, they called him Al Albino. In, in Spanish, he was called Al Albino. So I said, listen, Albino, I am very nervous of you, so be gentle with me. And he said, okay, get on my back and we'll see. It was fine until I lost my stirrups. We weren't filming at the time. Legs all flapping around, bouncing up and down. He went charging towards this on a hill, and there was a great big fancy hedgy thing at the bottom. And I thought, okay, are you going to stop, stop, stop? Whoa, nothing. Spanish, no, nothing. Nada, nada. Okay, straight towards the thing. Here I am, flapping around. I thought, okay, I'm going to have to get off. So I did. So I was on this um, Western saddle thing, which isn't like an English one. So I hopped off, fell off, shoulder up here. Richard Widmark ran over. He was playing my dad. Kind of, he said, no, we can't help her up. She's anyway. I was uh, carted off to the hospital, and that was me. Was called a talent for loving. Oh, Richard Widmark playing my dad. Cesar Romero. It's another fun. Is it? Yeah, it's very good. Is it? Oh.
Okay. It must be unusual, Wesley. It's very unusual with the casting. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's great fun, my first of all. We have a few minutes to take questions, not many, unfortunately. Um, th does anybody have anything? Any questions? Yes? Sophia, I love the Thunderbirds movie. You were an awesome Lady Penelope. <laughs> And the fellow who played Parker opposite you, whose name... Uh, Ron Cook. Yeah. What was it like working with him? Because I thought you guys were spot on perfect. I brought my little kid. My kids were little when that movie came out. They adored it. My son ran around, Thunderbirds are go! <laughs> you know? But the way you two were playing off each other in that film, that was for us. That was for the grown-ups. And it was just yeah. fabulous. I yeah, loved well, it. Yeah, we were the sort of element of the adult we were trying to tick the adult humour box. Also, we were lucky because Richard Curtis came in and rewrote all of the Lady Penelope and Parker dialogue, so that's why our stuff was so funny. It's awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, but Ron was amazing to work with, and it was the first time that I played part of a double act, and it's, it's such a joy when you get such a good sparring partner like that. I mean, we just laughed all the time, and it was great. The hair on the back of my neck stands up the first time the car flies. Yeah. I knew it was coming, too, because I knew the show yeah. was <laughs> Yeah, awesome. no, it was You were right at the end. Yes, I was. I was. So, um, and of the carry, the carry ons as well. 1978, yes. 58 to 78 for the carry on films. Uh, and and to all those carry on numbers, but that's another story. When the Americans left, what, what really happened were the Americans left. They were a huge part of the film world in, in England. I mean, it, they were, it was great too. But they all started leaving. Yeah. So they pulled out. There was different tax laws and everything. Yeah. So I think, and the studios, you know, great big old studios. There was a different change with different yeah. governments. So everything did really change, really. And and yeah, we did miss them. I must say, oh, film really? industry, absolutely. Yeah. So I they, they had the money. You know, the money was yeah. So you 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 left the ship. I left the ship and went on. We went hit, on. We hit, on. Hit, hit the real ship. Yeah. Well, the American <laughs> ship. <laughs> I'm sorry we can't do any more uh, questions, but if you have anything you would like to ask any of these people, we'll be back in the room shortly. Well, what room is ours? Where are we? Yeah, where, where are we? Skyline. 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 Skyline Suite, I think. And there's two rooms up to the little steps. Skyline. You'll hear us, I'm sure. No, you won't. You won't, because we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Fast things happening outside, and we're up. We're very cozy. It's very, very, very little room, all four of us together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank and you. And we don't mind. Sorry. Uh, Valerie, Sophia, Caroline, very much. Thank you all. Thank you.